Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to episode 5 in the Sierra Nevada series. We're at number 5 already and if you watched yesterday's video you'll know that this is basically just a continuation of yesterday's video. So in yesterday's video we looked at this, the Sierra Nevada Porter, and today we're taking a look at its counterpart the Sierra Nevada Stout. So I wanted to do these two back to back to get a real good idea of what the differences were given that they're both just generic porter and generic stout by the same brewery. I thought it'd be good to kind of get a tab on which one's better and um, which one, if you could still buy it, would be the one to go for, which is seems a bit strange to be reviewing something that you pretty much can't buy anymore. If you're watching this on the day of release or within a week or so, I think Beer Hop will still have some of these if you're interested. Uh, that's where I got mine from. I bought them from them um, last week and I checked early today and they still had some. So uh, if you are interested, that is a place to buy them. I'm sure there are plenty of other retailers in the UK and further afield as well. So yeah, this is Sierra Nevada Stout, West Coast style this says. Uh, I thought it was just straight up. So West Coast style stout. So West Coast style IPAs tend to be a bit more bitter and piney than West Coast. So this is going to be a bitter piney stout. I'm not sure, but We'll find out very, very soon. Just before we crack into it, here is a look at the bottle. As per yesterday, using the same, not the same glass, but the same shape and design glass to get an equal reading on this. Right. I was about to say not quite as lively on the pour as the pour to that one, but actually not much in it overall. I'm just going to let that settle for a moment and then we'll have a look at see what the aromas are saying. That is a lot darker than the porter. The porter was verging on a on kind of best bitter territory yesterday. This one, I can still see quite a bit of red in the bottom of the glass, but I mean, I don't think I'll be able to get it across on camera. You can just see a glimmer at the bottom there, I think. It's it's a lot darker, but it's still not the darkest of dark beer. So that settled down a bit. Aroma time. A bit more metallic, a bit more generic stout iron-esque. Less sweet than the porter was. The bitterness is definitely there. I say a bit of iron. Not dissimilar to Guinness. Shake it about a bit. A couple more floral, grassy notes. Some pine might be seeping in there, that'll be interesting to see. If that transpires into the taste, of course. I'm not really getting a lot more from it. Bit of coffee roastness, as you'd expect with a stout. Maybe a touch of vanilla in there, but really not a lot else. So, let's get in. Cheers. That is both wonderfully similar to, and yet, distinctly stand alone from the porter. It's almost clear that they're from the same irk, but the way they go about it is quite a bit different. So let's try and get some top to bottom taste notes. Initially, this is just bitter across the front of the tongue. The porter was a bit sweeter. This is just straight bitterness. And then that next phase is a transcendent, almost boobiesy lick. It's not particularly strong this, I think it's still sub 6%, but let's have a look. It is, yeah, 5.8. It's a touch stronger than Porter, but not by much. Um, but you get a real, just a warming, slightly boozy, maybe even a bit of kind of festive nutmeg thing going on. Eggnog kind of booze and, you know what I mean. That suddenly clears, gives a way to a, uh, very traditional beer bitterness. Again, like with the Porto, I kept referencing um, kind of best bitters, it's that kind of bitterness. And then on the finish, it's a bit sweet, a bit caramel, but there's some floral grassy thing in there as well. This isn't West Coast in the same way that a West Coast IPA is for sure. Um, it's not got huge hits of pine, but there's a low level, Slightly floral grassy note right at the back, but it's it's small. It's just helping lift you out of that what is quite a deep, rich thing and leaving you with something a bit more, not refreshing, but just less heavy overall. 
That's really good. Right. Let's take a look at the bottle. Sierra Nevada Stout, West Coast style. Sierra Nevada Brewing Co. Chico, California, Mills River, North Carolina. Purest ingredients, finest quality as on every bottle. Stout. Sierra Nevada Stout is a full-bodied American version of traditional black ale. It is perfectly balanced with big roasted malt flavours, earthy whole cone hops. So it's probably those whole cone hops that are kind of uh, masquerading as slightly floral. Um, but it works. On the back, it goes on to say, in 1980, when we were building the fledgling brewery, we needed a beer with bold flavours to test the new hand-built brew house. The first brew was a stout rich with roasted malts and earthy whole cone American hops. We like the original stout so much we've kept it as we've grown. Decades later, it still reminds us of that early pioneering spirit. I mean, another tip to their uh, origins really with that one as the porter was. They've both been fantastic. Let's revisit this now briefly and then try and see if we can pick out a favourite. The aromas have come alive a bit more as they often do once the beer's been sat, but they've not really changed that much. It's more just sweetened off a bit. And then flavour wise, very much as it was, and I just think as my mouth's become accustomed to the bitterness in the middle of that bit, died down a bit so you get a bit of a less of a, a jarring hit in the middle and it's more just a free flowing thing and well that's really nice. Bit of extra bitterness actually at the end there which wasn't really there before but overall cracking bit. Right I still have some of the porter left from yesterday's video which was actually only 10 minutes ago so don't worry I've not left it for a day shooting these back to back as I already said so let me go grab that and we'll do a kind of a head to head. Okay so we have both of them as we can see by kind of the point where I was wrapping the video I'd actually drunk slightly more of the porter whether that means it's in its favour or not I'm not sure but um, let's jump back over there and see how that compares now we've had some of the stout. Much more coffee forward, much less bitter, touch sweeter. I think the bodies as I said before it was a bit thin I think it's still quite a bit thin compared to the stout. Yeah the stout's body is a lot thicker but also well, not, maybe not a lot thicker, it's just, this is, I would say, standard for a stout, whereas the porter, I think, might be a touch thin for a porter. The porter is completely flat, the stout's got a little bit of carbonation that, I'm not going to say whether it improves it or not, because I'm a bit thicker with carbonation stuff, because I generally prefer really flat beer, unless it's a Pilsner Lager, Belgian style, something like that. Um, but this is spiking the flavours around a lot more as a result, but it's a much more much more bitter, much more flavourful experience. They're both amazing and to be honest the answer as to which one I prefer, well if you want me to drink a few pints of it, the porter takes it. If I'm having one at home and I just want a nice experience, the stout takes it. This is more flavourful but I think might become grating after a couple of pints. This one you could probably drink all night but it's probably not going to wow you in the first instance. So. I hope that's helpful in some way, give you an idea of which to go for depending on your particular preferences. Um, and that's all really I have to say about them. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it if you haven't already. Subscribe if you'll be so kind and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.